Round of applause for us. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode four, count them, four of <clears throat> the Pretty Good Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. We just finished wrapping up Deadliest Warrior for this week, and now we are forbidding all Deadliest Warrior talk. That's but it. Mm -hmm. Brendan, give us a uh, hammer, like, slamming down sound effect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good, good sound effect. <laughs> All right. Craig, you have received your PlayStation 5 that you teased everyone with last week. Yeah, so here's the thing. I want you... You don't have to search for any PlayStation 5 reviews. I'm going to give you the definitive no-bullshit PlayStation 5 review. Okay, we're getting right into it. So real quick, some background on me, and this is important. <laughs> I am somebody who Xbox is my primary method of playing stuff. Um, most of my games last generation I bought through there. And, you know, like I'm pretty much an Xbox guy. So that's coming from that perspective, which I think is important. So when it comes to like the PS5, two things that I really like. One is that I really like, you really got to do that right now. <laughs> Couldn't have done that before we started recording. Go on. <laughs> I, I really oh. like uh, the controller. Uh, so Astrobot's Playroom is a really cool game that was not what I expected. It was um, really fun. Makes good use of the controller and kind of makes me sad how the Xbox controller didn't really like try a whole lot. It's just like there's a grip on the side. It's quieter, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, PlayStation kind of goes for the moon. There's like the touchpad, which gives you like almost like four other buttons almost. Um, the vibration's really great. I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima for the first time right now, and it uses vibration really well. Um, <laughs> you hold it on your lap when it vibrates. Yeah. So <laughs> they really did a good job in the controller and are trying for something like special, which Xbox really didn't. Um, the other thing I really like is that it feels like a new console. If you get the Series X, you get it and you're like, oh, this is like the same thing I already have, but it's faster and better. It doesn't feel like a new console where when you boot it up, the UI is different. Like it just, it's exciting and it feels like, okay, this is something new. So compared to Xbox, I like that a lot more at the PlayStation. Um, so that's cool. Some things I don't like. The biggest thing that I think is separating Xbox and PlayStation right now is the ecosystem. And what I mean by that is with Xbox, there's so many games. If you have a Game Pass, oh, I like, I'm just going to download it. I want to play that. Oh, I just download it. Like, if you want to play a game, there's a decent chance it's on it's on uh, Game Pass. So that's really exciting. When I booted up PlayStation, I was like, oh, like all these games I have to like buy. Like, yeah, and it's right. it's a weird feeling. So that's you know something I much prefer on Xbox. And the other thing is PlayStation Now, sort of from like the ecosystem perspective, compared to Game Pass. I wondered why most people didn't compare PlayStation Now and Game Pass because like they seem so similar at face value, but like they they're so different. Like it, it seems like PlayStation is super restrictive, if for like a reason that I'll get into for a second, which I think is what it is. But the games they have are usually relatively old. Um, some of them you can't download. Um, like there are games that you can't even buy. Like I PG? love, yeah. <laughs> well, I love Sly Cooper, one of my favorite series, and they have the collection on there. I don't want to stream it. I just want to fucking buy it. I would maybe pay sixty dollars for that collection, which is the PS3 collection from like ten years ago. But you can't. You have to stream it. And if your connection starts suffering. You can't just like sit through it. They're like, okay, you're done playing now. It's it's like what? Just let me download it. Like I don't understand. And like PlayStation or an Ape Escape Two, which is also a game I really like as a kid. <laughs> For me, it's one of those games. They ever have those games that like you just not like, you know every single sound. Like it. if one thing's off, you know <laughs> it. Escape. Ratchet and Clank for me. <laughs> yeah. Ape Escape 2, they have, they have the European version on there, which I won't get into all the weird shit on the European version, but like it's completely fucked on the PS5. Like there's all these weird visual effects and like popping, like where it's almost like unplayable. Like I think that if you had, I'm not kidding. If you had a history of like epileptic seizures, I would recommend you would not play it on <laughs> PS5 and it, don't put it on this, the system. If you can't play it, it's going to have all that fucked up shit. It's the European version. Do you like open up the game? It's like, Oh, bro. Hey, no, it's all, for <laughs> all, they change all the voices and they're all European. <laughs> so like, there's this little kid and he's like, <laughs> so what 
like I don't know. I, I can't. Oh, I don't know any quote that he says, but a sly could be in it. Yeah. It? Well, well, that's Ape Escape. Well, one well, thing I'll say about Ape Escape too, real quick. That's an ape. Is, that's an ape Escape right over there. Isn't it? Yeah. Ain't it, bro? <laughs> if you've never played Ape Escape two, like the, the plot is like apes escape, and the fun thing is they all have really yeah. <laughs> They, they all <laughs> so, <laughs> so they all have their own personalities and catching them's fun because they like you oh here's this ape here's that ape oh and i for a second i was like did they because all the apes i was catching they have their own names all the names sounded british and i was like did they change the names of the apes to be more british Man, and no, no 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 and then when i knew that they did i caught an ape that was named danny boy <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay they definitely changed the names oi oi my name's Nord. <laughs> Nigel Bertrand the third. Yeah. I'm downloading this tonight now. <laughs> yeah, one of the first ones. Don't play. Well, play on PS5 to see how fucked it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's all British, and if you play the Incredible. original, it's it's insulting. But anyway, <laughs> just that idea that I can't just play it and it works on PS5. Why would you let me play it if it's in such a bad state? Let alone European. Um, and just let me buy the shit. Um, and <laughs> I'll I'll say this. I think the reason for it. And this is something I, when I found out about this, it made a lot of sense. So this last thing, and, th and this is, this is actually interesting. So in Japan, there is a business concept that translates to not from here. And this idea that like if a concept or something is maybe it's popular in America or just not in Japan, even if it's profitable or popular, they won't adopt it. So that's why a lot of times you see like Nintendo is kind of behind the times when it came to streaming. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing. It's like they were going to charge people for streaming their game because they thought like it would devalue it. So a lot of stuff where you like look at like a Japanese company and you're like, well, why don't they just do this? It works so well in America. It's usually because they maybe don't see the value in it or just don't trust it because it's not from Japan. There's I read about it. There's a Wikipedia page about it. It's really interesting. So I think from their perspective, they think that having a lot of current games on, on there or like letting you download them would somehow devalue their games. Boy, that ape over there, he stole, he stole my six pence in quid. Yeah, I, I heard about did. that theory on oibrov.com. Right, or, well, or you muppet, get back here. Anyway, so yeah, that, that's my review. The ecosystem annoys me, but I'm glad that they made a cool controller. I just wonder how many games are actually going to make use of it. I agree with most of that that uh when i got the playstation 5 pretty much at release and it, it is like <laughs> it, it is it feels like a new console compared to i feel like the xbox and yeah. i was almost skeptical when i i just i got really lucky and i pre-ordered it and on like the for the release day and i was like how much can they really change between like the four and five it is it's worth it people yeah get the get the ps5 it's definitely a good upgrade matt I just know go buy it go to the mine. store and buy it mm -hmm. oh yeah if good luck if you can get your hands on one definitely get it i had no idea the like the can of like whoop ass or whatever i was opening there from craig yeah just, <laughs> yep. yeah a lot of i mean i'm really a lot of thoughts just like yeah. dense dense thoughts yeah my favorite part was craig, big brain stuff you know i got the text craig's like oh my playstation 5 came in and then he sends me a picture of the stand or whatever he's like what the fuck is this yeah cause <laughs> nor normally like I, I unbox something i know to hook it up hdmi goes here plug goes here pretty simple but i get this weird plastic contraption and i was like <laughs> lucas what the fuck is this i put mine on my system like day one completely forgot it even exists so like i was annoyed by it the first day of Oh, bro, this is stupid. That there it is, <laughs> but I just put it on and kind of forgot about it. But we got into like a discussion shortly after that that this generation of consoles is like the most oddly shaped yeah. <laughs> generation yeah. of consoles. You got what do they call it? Like the mini the fridge, mini fridge, and the uh, I don't remember what the nickname for the PS Five was, but it's it's really stupidly. It's like ooh, it's like a it's like a nice girl, you know, hourglass figure. <laughs> <laughs> the Christina Hendricks of consoles. <laughs> Now me, I have been playing Oblivion again. I know all you guys see me on that playing it. I have been the Elder Scrolls fan just like everyone else for like the longest Wait, time. Have you heard of the High Elves? Have you heard of the High Elves? <laughs> <laughs> I will defend to the death that the Oblivion is still the best Elder Scrolls game. For whatever reason, I love Skyrim, love like Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, go back, play them all constantly. Oblivion is the best story it's really dated now because it came out in like what 2006 at this point you really feel it but it's like in graphical but the story in that game and the guilds and everything are hands down the best go back 
play Oblivion. It's way better than you remember it being. It, it's definitely the memeiest. Like buy a PS5 and play Oblivion <laughs> on it. From I'm 2006. Play, yeah. I'm playing that on the uh, the bone. <laughs> the bones xbox one like, nice yeah because it's the old bones because it's free you don't have to pay anything playstation should be 60 bucks also fuck that 70 dollars <laughs> shit that's it okay just yeah. an extra 10 I own the that physical shit's copy of it I, I probably that's another thing too i went out and i rebought the um oblivion because i i didn't even realize it was on game pass the i game know you're gonna with, say that the game that you're at the horse dlc <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I like I rebought it and I went home and I realized I own like 15 copies of every Elder Scrolls game. I have Morrowind, Morrowind Game of the Year, like Oblivion, the the base one. I apparently somehow lost my Game of the Year. Someone probably borrowed it, so I rebought the Game of the Year one, even though I already have the regular. Then I have you know the 15 re-releases of Skyrim. There's been I own yeah. so many fucking copies of those games. <laughs> yeah, I, I think what's so charming about Oblivion is there's so much goofy stuff. Like it's equally like engaging if you want to get into it but it's also like got like the weird like the five people did all the voices yes and just and the awkward like face animation extremely memeable like yeah. you can go down a youtube rabbit hole and i have and i've <laughs> peppered you guys with them when yeah. i have just watching clip after clip of meme in oblivion just like <laughs> a funny interaction that happens because the game is just like got just the best npc two people yeah. walk yeah. up to each other have you heard someone stole something from the Imperial Palace? Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah, the body's still warm. Yeah. There must be a murderer about. <laughs> yeah. There's a killer afoot. <laughs> and then like I the... have to find who did this. <laughs> and you're standing right there. <laughs> must have been nothing. My favorite must someone... have been the wind. <laughs> pay did for you... whoever did this. Did you see the video from Skyrim where that guy's like up on a hill and he pulls his bow back, shoots an arrow, then he fast travels down to I think it's called like the wharf or whatever where all the boats are and he goes and talks to this guy and the, the arrow just comes down and hits him <laughs> in the side of the head. <laughs> I, it's, that's awesome. The sneak was so broken in Skyrim too. Yeah. I remember playing. Like if you go in a sneak and like you sit in the shadows, I can be like as close to someone as I am to like Craig right now and they, just they won't, won't see you and they'll yeah. be like, must have been the wind. Yeah. <laughs> but do you mean Oblivion or Skyrim? Skyrim for that one. Oh, yeah. The sneak in Oblivion is overly sensitive. The one in Skyrim is broken. I think one of my favorite aspects is the speech mini game, which as a kid yeah. is one of the most <laughs> impossible things to figure out. But like, it's like an alien that designed it where it's like not intuitive at all, where you have this wheel and like these different <laughs> topics and like you have to talk about a topic that's going to piss someone off, but you have to do it when like With, it's like, the least, least impact yeah. yeah and you're like this makes no sense did you ever in play, the phase like did you ever do the uh, oblivion i never played wheel? oblivion no you need to go back and play it yeah and you you scroll over like the four topics that it's like joke um admire blah 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 so like something else and you scroll <laughs> over each topic and it's like the level of intensity you're going to be addressing that topic and their faces go yeah, it's, like more than anything, like, they'll react sometimes to they it. get like, yeah, they'll get really pissed. Just uncanny. Yeah, and as a oh. kid, it's fucking impossible to figure out like, wh yeah. what is this? Oh, I would just, I just kept clicking A as a kid, and it would just go around the wheel, and they'd be like, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. Yeah, it, it made no sense, but yeah, it's yeah, I love that. Brendan, there is a book that you want to talk about. We're gonna bring you in now. You yeah. want to get in so, frame, uh, Brendan? Oh yeah, here I can. Since put no, it's all right. I, I'm okay with being out of frame. All right. Are, Hello. I'm looking away <laughs> from the camera. I'm not going to be like Dan. <laughs> so ever since that one other podcast we've been doing, uh, I've been getting into a lot of, you know, history and just doing like some some his, some uh, research and whatnot. And I decided for whatever reason to pick up Herodotus. It was at uh, Barnes & Noble and I just decided to pick it up. And let me tell you, this is an absolute ride. Yeah. Well, like, so what is Herodotus? I honestly don't know. He's uh, a historian. Way back when, he covered uh, the Persian Wars, like, happened with Sparta, Peloponnesian He's like Wars, the OG so. historian. Yeah. This right? was like the, the ancient the, Barry the, Jacobson. The, yeah. Yes. The basis yeah. of Who? a lot of the <laughs> history. <Right. laughs> And this, it does not read like a history book. It reads like some weird, I just did it, Dan. <laughs> it just reads like some weird fantasy novel. Like I read the first page and it opened up. The first line was, oh, bruv. <laughs> like there's this one king of Lydia, Candales, who says that his wife is so beautiful. He asks his favorite guard to go see her naked. Okay. And then it was, his wife sees the guard and then has the guard kill the king. 
I think I watched a video okay. like that last night. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's this tyrant of uh, Athens. Guess how he was deposed? Uh, no, no political reason. He just had anal sex with his wife, and his wife's father did not like that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. this is the new Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. It it, yeah. it reads just like this, and then it's uh, a wild ride. What is it? Cyrus the Great. Apparently, his father. Uh, Astyages had a dream that his mother urinated so copiously that it covered all of Asia. Wow. I gotta read this book. I love that. It (laughs) is the weirdest thing that I've ever read, and I love it. It's incredible. It's so strange. So pick up a copy of Herodotus. Right now, I'm reading the uh, landmark Herodotus by... uh, Robert B. Strasler, translated by Andrea L. Purvis. Nice. So, Purvis. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Imagine like, it is, a translator for that, just like, oh, Jesus, fuck. How do I write this? Yeah. It is so weird and not what I expected at all. Yeah. And I, I just had to bring that up, that it was just... I love I it. it. I did it Dan again. Nice. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Zoom in on me real quick. Give me a little zoom, zoomy boy. <laughs> Welcome to Lucas's Corner, the shit only I care about. Last week it was Farming Sim. This week, it was actually kind of like last week at this point, but you know, I wanted to try to get as much source as possible, and there was none, but there is a possible new Twisted Metal game. But David Jaffe is not involved with it at all, and he's pretty sad about it. So hopefully we got look forward to that. There is the new Twisted Metal series TV show coming out. <laughs> and if we ever do actually get a new Twisted Metal game, everyone knows the last one was PlayStation 3. It was a little eh because they didn't do character stories. They only did kind of like three main characters and they had good stories, but it just wasn't the same game. Really hoping we get like kind of a throwback to the old ones. And that's uh, everyone's bored out of their minds. So that was Lucas's corner this week. <laughs> <laughs> We done? Yeah, we're done with Lucas's corner. Cool. What's, uh, Matt, what's the next topic? This right here, oh. right in front of us, and the the this welts baby. that are on my leg. We got to address that, and the welts that might be on your brother. Oh, dude, head. my brother in law's <laughs> head. I was texting him the other day. He said they've gone down to just red marks. <laughs> um, well, I had uh, this past weekend. I uh, had my bachelor party. So I, I got married last year at the height of the pandemic, but I had already paid for a wedding. So it was either lose all that money or have that wedding this year. So just like the wedding, I couldn't have like a big bachelor party either. So we had a bachelor party on Saturday and we went and did airsoft down at a place here in Pittsburgh and the battlegrounds it was called. Yeah, then we had a party afterward where we did a little roast and uh ate some ate some grilled goods and such. But yeah, we we did airsoft at the battlegrounds and these chaps along with Dan who you've seen on our other podcast pitched in and got got me a, a pulse an airsoft pulse rifle from <laughs> the Alien movies cuz I love aliens. So it was a lot of fun. This thing is heavy as hell uh but it's pretty cool so (laughs) it fires like full auto out the top obviously here the shotgun does not work but it is for show if you open it up there's a little shell in the chamber that's kind of cool damn loads in here i have not put the nine volt battery in it yet that makes the little ammo counter glow but (laughs) it's pretty cool so I think Dan said the base of it, it's like a Tommy gun. Yeah, he said it's built off a of Tommy gun, like the airsoft version is, uh, which is actually what Lucas was using. Uh, it was the same exact Tommy gun Lucas was using during the other podcast. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, well, we have a picture of it on that podcast, but you used it Saturday I in did. the airsoft battle. Let so. me tell you the story of that that airsoft <laughs> so yeah i take my tommy gun down and we have like 14 guys down there and we have all of our stuff laid out we have this place rented out for like three hours we're like we're all dressed up in our stupid shit role playing pretending and we get up into the arena and like everyone's hyped like oh yeah we start out with team deathmatch and you know we each get we split up into teams we go into our spawns and i'm like come on guys we all go to rush them right out the gate i come running out you know woo 
the whistle blows, come running out, get behind a wall, blue, 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 blue. I get like two guys out. I am on such like a euphoric high. I'm yeah. like, this is awesome, man. Then I go and I hide behind. They had, this was a pretty cool place. They had like cars inside, like it was like an old warehouse or something like that. And they had, you know, it was different levels and they had cars and fake buildings and everything. I hide behind this car. I jump out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get someone else. I get lit the fuck up by someone's gun. <laughs> and the only thing I can think of is how bad this hurts. Yeah. 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 yeah like, so uh, airsoft, obviously, like the honor system, unlike paintball, you can't really tell if someone gets hit. So, like, you get shot in that. You kind of put your hands up and just to say, okay, I'm out. You go back to the spawn and then come out. Team Beth Match, you can't really keep score. It's just kind of for fun. Um, the first few times you die, you're like, I gotta get back in there. And you're running back to the spawn, <laughs> touching it, and then getting back out. And then after maybe like the third time you die, you're just like walking as slow <laughs> as possible because <laughs> you don't want to get shot again. You're like, ouch. Dude, yeah. uh, Brendan, <laughs> Brendan had a cool setup. Brendan, you were in like Vietnam era gear and you had a yeah. Vietnam M16, which was pretty cool, I thought. Uh, Got the bandana and the aviators. Yeah. Our boy yeah. Dan, Dan Martin, who appeared on last last episode's general podcast right because yeah, he was on yeah, he was on. yeah. uh but no that was two ago that'd be, that'd be yeah, two. yeah dan dan goes hard at airsoft and uh he he brought like 20 guns with him <laughs> and his his gear and i remember this is a shout out uh he did yell yeah spitznaz at one point with <laughs> yeah. and he had his revolver and I saw him at one point chasing someone into a building going like this, <laughs> like rapid firing the six shooter. And uh, I just started cracking up. Yeah, yeah I, I think that I think somebody because whenever you're like within like seven feet, they said you would just yell bang, bang. So you don't shoot the person they would hurt a lot close range even though people did shoot me close range because you know. i got shot at sometimes yeah. <laughs> sometimes you don't like being the guy that jumps around the corner and yells bang because you scare the guy and, and, he, they shoot and he shoots you yeah. yeah yeah but there was i think someone held me up and hit bang and i went like this have my ballistic knife in this hand <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it was it was fun i think i had something else to say i don't remember yeah uh but, my brother-in-law zach did get shot three separate times in the forehead. I don't know how, because you wear a mask. Yeah. It might have been like right I don't above. Know. It, it was like above, because you wear like a mask that goes up to here, and he was not wearing a hat, like a lot of us were, but he got hit like right here. It, he got hit, it's all in like the same spot, three separate times in three separate matches. <laughs> he got hit in like that same spot. I guess maybe he just kept doing like the, <laughs> Pe peeking yeah peeking over the trench yeah. so, so that's where he got we, shot you might but. have had too many people because like there are certain points where you cannot go anywhere kudos to whoever yeah. actually attacked the objective yeah. i did my best but like i remember one time me and someone else were in this hole and we just got completely pinned down where it was like just like constant fire we were at and we're like bro what the f what the fuck <laughs> we do yeah. and i there was one moment where you i was like okay this is worth the price of admission I was around a corner and I was getting pinned down. I used these hand signals, commanded Brendan to like get sort of behind like the, the this cover and take out the person who was shooting at me, pinning me down. And I I commanded Brendan. And I heard the other person yell, "I'm hit!" And I was like, "Dude, this is awesome. Yeah, this is right. like fucking <laughs> Rainbow Six. This is so this cool. This is like goddamn yeah I, something." I had that moment where I I ran a flank on the right hand side and we had. I turned the corner. We got one guy right there within like the set. He's like two feet away from me. I snuck right up on him. I got another guy about like 20 feet and then another guy about 30 feet. And they're all facing this way. And I was just like, oh, shit. I was like, <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> like got them both. And I was like, yeah, I, I felt like John Rambo. I was, yeah. like, I was like, I'm the uh, bat, most badass man alive and then got shot subsequently thereafter. <laughs> My favorite part is when we went to book this. It was described as a child's entertainment center. Yeah. <laughs> and we were, besides the owner, we were probably the oldest people in that building. Yeah. Still playing there because it was like all 13 year old kids. The thing is, the, the airsoft is definitely uh, like all ages, like kids, teens, and adults. Because you have to do like, you have to do private bookings now because of COVID. And honestly, that's probably better because yeah. it's probably hell when you mix in like, adults that go really hard 
at we this game. We played with guns over the limits. They let us play with like yeah. stuff that hit harder too. And like, yeah, but our welts were like bleeding. They so they also, hit hard. They don't just have airsoft. They have like nerf nerf stuff set up in there and if so you're a pussy it was well <laughs> it's for the little kids like we came down to the lobby i remember all in our gear yeah. and there was a whole group of like little children they were there like kindergartners yeah. and, and we were like are these kids playing airsoft because they're gonna suck like like can we're, we face them yeah you know like, beat their ass i was about to go join that group and then i was coming down like all red on one yeah. side and then it's like oh they're they're here for nerf and it's like all right gotcha yeah. dude there was one match there we had there was this thing where you had to collect pieces around the map and you had to build it was like milk crates and you had to build yeah. a tower milk crate challenge. Milk crate challenge. <laughs> milk crate challenge and that how that map was just set up it was kind of like open we got a bad spawn i think our team and because we we're all three of us yeah definitely the spawn that's four of that's us why we lost team i think all yeah, four of us were, all four yeah. of us were on the same team yeah and i was like trying to defend our tower and trying to go the other seven one. on seven for the record yeah i crawled underneath this thing that was so i was like you know kind of crouched down like squatting almost and i got lit the fuck up yeah and it hurt so bad and like they didn't stop shooting and i'm like i'm out i'm out <laughs> jesus i'm out you know i'm like holding my, and I'm like i have the welts on my leg down yeah. here they are like bright red still and yeah. then we got called downstairs because there's like 10 minutes in between like each round and he's like oh we're ready to go into the next game and it was something where you had to like capture an, uh, an objective in the middle and turn a light on yeah i did not play that game at all yeah. I held back. like i was so sore i was like man i'm not ready to get lit up again. yeah i like held back and um that's funny our friend steve was like all right lucas me and you were gonna do a rush i'm like i'm with you steve he'd run off by himself and i'd you know be standing back at the spawn still like throwing out a little bit of cover fire yeah. and he'd come back i'm out yeah well i remember i followed steve because he was like <laughs> we're just gonna rush the light and i'd be like yeah and it's so always chasing after him and i would hear He's like, I'm out, and I was like, <laughs> I, I was hyping back him up, but but don't worry. The next round was the briefcase capture, and I said I got dominated, stop yep. being a pussy, and I captured the briefcase in the center, and yep. I didn't die that round. I was good. very proud. It was funny because uh, we advanced and got like the farthest briefcase, and yeah. then and then you and I were standing there, and the ref comes walking by, and he go, he points like five feet over from where we are, and he's like, "There's a briefcase right over there, guys," <laughs> and we were like. Oh, okay. And <laughs> the only thing between us in this briefcase, though, is a little like cutout. So, like, if you can picture, I'm behind cover, and then there's a hallway. Luke's behind cover right by me. On the other side of the hallway is where the briefcase is. And so that's where the enemy is like firing from. It's like, we're trading open, yeah. it's like open, like yeah. no man's land where we're, they're like, we're trading shots. Yeah, we're trading shots over it. Luke goes, Luke and I, he's like, going for the briefcase i was like i got you covered so i am not turning and getting shot like on no man's land so i was covering down this way like right in front of us where the briefcase was because there were enemies coming from that direction lucas jumps across the thing grabs the briefcase and as he's jumping back i just hear like ting 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 <laughs> like bouncing off the surface right behind him it was like just barely like missing him and i was like oh shit yeah. <laughs> i have that moment where my back is up against the wall i'm right here and i'm like oh man it's like the metal gear cover you, yeah you have to psych yourself yeah. up because you yeah. know like the next 10 seconds are just, just gonna, gonna run pain. yeah like, you just gotta do like the, <laughs> the cross. Yeah, right exactly <laughs> i came around the corner like did like the slide as i grabbed the case and i'm like <gasps> just wait yeah, like, yeah. The, the pain didn't come but i was just waiting like i was like <laughs> i had a moment exactly like that in the milk crate one where i had to get a milk crate off a pallet and i kid you not those i could feel them i could feel the shots brushing past my ass like as i was running away <laughs> like i was like I, I had to like just go up grab this milk crate and just start running and it was like ting 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 ding. <laughs> speaking of ass during Dancing. that same game i was like hiding behind one of these boxes i was covering this the uh, like little front center area yeah and somebody came behind me and shot me right oh yes oh no <laughs> like it hit right the chocolate starfish it hurt oh like my hell. god that would be the worst place to get shot yeah that or the ball besides three times in the forehead <laughs> yeah. 
what a good time get some friends together i know airsoft is generally like regarded as like a little kid thing i guess or it's kind uh, of like, there's a lot of adults that do it yeah so. but i think it has that like perception where like it's a little like yeah eh, like it was fun it was a good time yeah, that's all i can try say. it one time go it's, it's I mean, good it's like, male it's like bonding exercise. but like yeah i thought it would hurt less than paintball and it really didn't what's what i was surprised at like i had this like conception like oh it didn't even hurt that bad and yeah i'm like bleeding from where i got shot yeah, I think Dan was bringing in some uh, some serious firepower. Yeah, I think too. we were over the limit for that place, but uh, <laughs> they didn't care because it was a group of all of us. So, but together. it was a good night. Then we went back to your uh, your house and we had a nice bachelor party where we hung out till late at night. Got and, to see the and, Steelers play, and that's all that needs to be said about it. <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, <laughs> well, that's why we pushed back this podcast and yeah. uh, the other podcast a little bit. We had uh, we had some friend time. It was good. Yep. The only thing we didn't do that. Uh, at the time, you know, I would have voted for, but I'm glad now we didn't have like the bachelor party stripper or anything. Show no, up. no. So, and I was your dad was there. It was your uh, yes. parents' house. Like my dad was there. My father, my father in law was there, and like I said, my brother in law who is a few years younger than me, and we're cool, but it's not something I wanted to experience with him. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like him two feet away from me, just like. Stripper's up? ass in your face. What's up, dude? <laughs> but yeah, right. Exactly. So none of that. Um, but you know, <laughs> you know, we had a great time though. Do you it remember was, when we good. used to have that trend where, you know, occasionally we would go to like a strip club or something, yeah. and we'd take an Uber down, and we thought it was hilarious to lie to the Uber about what our job was to see yes. how ridiculous we can make yeah. it, or we'd do that with the stripper also. Like we were going downtown um, Pittsburgh one time, and I'm unshaven. I have this like. It just looked like a pile of pubes on my face beer. I looked, you know, I had long hairs right after I got out of the military. And we're in this Uber, and I'm like, um, I'm doing this fake conversation with Matt. I'm like, yeah, I grabbed all my stuff. You know, I made sure to close up the office today. You know, top <laughs> of the UPMC building downtown. <laughs> it's like the number one big building downtown yeah. where all, like, the big the big wigs are. And this guy's like, really? You work up there? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, bud. <laughs> sure. I know That's you like telling the strippers. Nineteen year old uh, kid. <laughs> oh, I'm a uh, yeah. I guess I always tell strippers that I'm like a surgeon or whatever. I always tell them that I'm like a surgeon. Except I have a degree, so I did. I ended up graduating with a degree in fi in finance, and that word that like even though um the job I had very recently in finance was not very like exciting or highbrow or anything like that it was like all i have to do is tell people that like it, strippers let their mind go wild yeah because it's like so what do you do and i'm like oh you know i work in finance and it's like <laughs> instantly just like do you want to buy a dance it's like uh <laughs> i don't know if that would be a great investment or not <laughs> you know what a colossal waste of money those clubs are though. oh yes you got to go in there with like the expectation you're going to spend like you're, way hey, too much money here's on. finance advice for those of you out there if you're going to a strip club uh take in cash the amount of money you're willing to spend and then don't go to the atm once your wallet is empty leave you will uh that that strategy has always kept me safe and uh or just don't go <laughs> and it'll keep you safe too it, so if you have like a hundred bucks in there and you're like this is all i'm gonna spend today you might very well be tempted to spend all hundred dollars but you know what when that wallet runs dry you can just be like okay time to go home you, plus like minor point about strip clubs if you've never oh. been to one they're not as good as you think. Well, here's the thing, like I feel like the internet has ruined strip clubs. You could see way freakier shit on the hub. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to pay money a stripper to dance <laughs> when you could watch some like chick spreader asshole. I think it's a novelty because when you like, just for for our sake, we never we don't like go by ourselves or anything. It's always when we have like a group of guys in town and it's like a bachelor party or there's like something. And I feel like it's more of like a I, novelty. Now. Yeah, I hadn't been in a really long time until you and I just went this yeah, past week. You, you know, and it was to celebrate like my bachelor party thing. And it was, it, it I hadn't been there in like a few years. And when we went town together, I was like. We stayed for like a couple hours, and I was like, "That was fun." Yeah, we had a good <laughs> you, know, time, like, you know, had a couple drinks, made it rain. You know, made <laughs> it rain on some young ladies with ones, and uh, we had fun. 
It was a good night. <laughs> Making a nice investment in their education. Exactly. I was like, here, you know, cocaine or community college, one of the two. You know, <laughs> go spend it. Either way. <laughs> we also, this week, we finally watched... There is a really B-rate movie out there called Harold. Oh, my God. I should run and get the DVD so Dude, I can run show it. You it keep I, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I'll give the description of it. It is about a 13-year-old kid who's balding. Is it? Uh, whenever you get the case, I got to see what movie production company it is. It is like we bought it thinking it's going to be the worst movie on earth, and it actually was not that bad, but it is just like terrible b-rate jokes it's all the same joke about oh this kid's I, 13 and he's balding i don't think craig hasn't like seen the cover of this at all craig what's your reaction to this cover here uh, we'll get it in the light here so you guys can see it but <laughs> look how shitty it looks just like right out the gate so what's it's, that price tag on the side of it <laughs> it's three dollars it? yeah <laughs> so it's abigail's breslin's brother spencer breslin who you've never heard of for a the, reason is that beans it might be. <laughs> Is that? Uh, and it's starring Cuba Gooding Jr. in it. And we <laughs> thought Cuba Gooding Jr. is going to show up for like a minute tops. The whole movie, people. And he's the highlight of the movie. It was kind of funny. Here. I was surprised. Chris Parnell is the mean gym, gym teacher. So the... The production company is called like, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's called City Lights Home Entertainment. And every trailer on this DVD was a movie from City Lights Entertainment. And they all looked like the worst movies ever made. Let me tell you what I want. We watched the trailers and we thought they were hilarious. Like everything from City Lights Entertainment. City Lights Entertainment, if you were out there watching, we want to do live watch parties where we watch yes. your movies with everyone. Oh, dude, <laughs> can I read this? Happen. <laughs> so what we, Lucas and I have a bit where we like to go to the local exchange and buy like terrible looking movies. They're usually Adam Sandler movies. It's like a DVD. Or, the exchange for anyone not in Pittsburgh, it's like a local chain. It sells like used video games, used DVDs, used CDs, yeah. like any like entertainment. And... They, they, we saw this movie there for like, we always buy them for like a dollar or three dollars or whatever. And we saw this movie and we were like, this looks awful. And I Googled it. And apparently this movie, they spent $3 million to make it. And they made thirteen thousand dollars at the box yeah. office. <laughs> so he, 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 he said, slide whistle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on, oh. I'm on the IMDb one. Metacritic score gave it a 10. Nice. Says, a genuine oddity that's more watchable than it sounds. Hell yeah. I mean, it, well, I agree Lucas. With that. Hey, yeah, it's, not, it's not a 10, but I want to read you some of the reviews on the back here, too. From New York Magazine Harold goes down as easily as a cup of lemonade on a hot summer day. <laughs> and then the second, the second review is from the New York Sun Napoleon Dynamite with a higher IQ. <laughs> This movie, okay, it kind of sucks. And it sucks in the way that, like, you can tell it's very low production quality. Uh, and 90%, I'm going to give it 90% of the jokes fall completely flat. Like, they're just bad. Like, the main bit of the movie sucks. And the main bit is that you have a 13-year-old kid who looks like an old man and acts like an old man. So he's balding. Uh, and he dresses like an old man and he's grumpy all the time. And every bit to do with Harold being an old man sucks. Like yeah. he goes to the doctor and the doctor th mixes him up with an older patient and uh, gives him a prostate exam. The old lady that lives next door to him hits on him because she thinks that he's like, 60 years old or whatever it's one of those movies you can predict everything that's about to happen he too. gets into he we just talked about strip clubs he gets into a strip club because they don't id him because they think he's old and every joke that has to do with that terrible like not funny however there were at least like three to five jokes in this movie mostly i think from kuba gooding jr and background cast too yeah like just that, random background people that are funny that said shit that made us unironically laugh and the reason it stood out lucas and i are not the end-all be-all judges of course but <laughs> we have a hobby where we 
buy like terrible they're mostly adam sandler movies like i said i want to get into that in we a couple minutes here. we watch them and we say like okay like we get a we give a movie a 15 minute test like because we're buying it for a dollar so <laughs> if it doesn't make it past the 15 minutes we just get rid of it and put in the next one we watch this whole movie it's a tight 90 watch the whole movie and it wasn't completely insufferable like it was it was fine <laughs> my favorite part our friend came into town adam and yeah we're like you want to watch harold again with adam and we all just like I don't want to watch Ad, it again. Yeah, Adam was game. He's like, yeah, I'll watch it with you guys. And then I went to put it in. I go, let me be honest with you guys. I don't want to watch this again. <laughs> now, I so for one time through when you're just drinking and hanging out with friends, I would say you could do a lot worse than Harold. It's kind of an oddity because it's like this production company that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But uh, I not going to like recommend you to waste your like Friday with your girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. Watching well, I'll, I'll say real quick. Spencer Breslin was that kid from cat in the hat. Oh, who? <laughs> yeah. uh, the Mike Myers cat. Yeah. In the hat. Ever heard of him? Ever, Ever heard, heard of the cat of in the hat? Yeah. So, all right. So I'll make you honey, baby. <laughs> God. <laughs> I want to go around the table now. <laughs> What's the worst movie you've ever watched? Oh, like you're, I, I know it right now. I mean, I know what yours is because I bought it for you, I'm assuming. Well, no, I wasn't going to say that one, actually. Oh, is it the one that I own then? Jack and Jill. Yeah. Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill. You're thinking of Bucky Larson, which will be we, my pick. <laughs> we need to do a watch a watch party of all of us with Bucky Larson because it's an inside like funny movie that no one else has seen because, well, we, and i'm glad that you haven't seen it we potentially have a series coming out soon which we'll uh but we'll get to in a minute jack and jill uh our friend adam paid a dollar to get it and they should have paid him ten dollars to buy it because it was such a terror that movie i remember we sat through like the opening two minutes and i wanted to shut it off and and but we were obligated to give it 15. I don't even think we made it. To we didn't though. make it to 15. We made it like maybe five. <laughs> I think we made it up to the point that Al Pacino starts doing the Dunkin' Donuts commercial, which on its own, if you just look up the Dunkin' Chino commercial, is like ironically funny because of how stupid it is. <laughs> but Jack and Jill, awful. The worst movie I've ever seen, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's fair because I think that's out of like every bad movie we've ever watched, I think that's the quickest we've ever turned one on. Yeah, I have a high tolerance. We hit about minute two of that movie, and I I said, turn it off. Turn it the fuck off. We have this, Get it like, out. Get we it have off. this hobby we do where when we watch bad movies, we as weird as it is, we drink wine. Mm -hmm. Like we all like go in on like a big bottle of wine. We, 99 crimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even get us through that like, nope. first two minutes. Nope. It was that bad. Yeah. Craig, what is the worst movie you have ever seen? Dragon well, Ball Evolution. No, I've never seen that movie. I, I, if I saw that movie, it looks like a booger. <laughs> if I saw that movie, I would legitimately give it a chance, but I've honestly really? never seen it. So, kind of off the top of my head, I'll, I'll give you maybe more mainstream one, maybe a little more deep cut. The mainstream one that I can think of as like I was just so fucking bored was 2003 Hulk. As a oh, kid, okay. my dad walked me out of with that. With Eric Bana, yeah, it was probably yeah. the kindest thing he's ever done. No, I love my dad. <laughs> I, I just meant like, like he's my dad's a good dad, and that was still the kindest thing he's ever done for me. It's not yeah. like me watching that. Actually, yeah. he rented it. I don't know. Either way, not a, not an entertaining movie. I think with the deeper cut. I thought you were gonna you were gonna like look into the camera and be like Avengers Endgame. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, never seen it. Yeah. Um, Back in the day, you guys not might not remember. Nowadays, Netflix on everybody's TV. It's so easy to watch it anywhere. Right. I believe before even the Wii, the very first place Netflix ever was was Xbox 360. If I'm not mistaken, it was either the first or one of the first. Fact check that. Ja Jamie, um, Jamie, look that up. Yeah. So, the, and they had the weirdest shit, dude. Netflix back in the day was so cool. You had so much weird stuff. Like, what was that one weird zombie movie? Oh, I dude, just, I know what you guys are talking about. Uh, not the zombie movie, but we used to watch Filthy McNasty. I was going to say Filthy McNasty. It, oh. So the plot is it's like, it's part of this production company's weird universe where they make deliberately low budget movies. And when we were in high school, they're like, we were like 15 watching this Filthy McNasty movie. I am so like our parents probably like might have like peered down in the basement and not heard any porn. So they were like, oh, that that's fine. 
they should have stopped us from yeah. watching. I would rather catch my son watching hardcore pornography than watching Filthy McNasty. Yeah. It was 2008 that uh, Xbox got Netflix. You know what's crazy that a lot of people don't realize, not to like sidetrack, but Netflix has been around since 1997. Isn't I know, that that's weird? wild, isn't it? It's wild. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so it basically the plot is it's like a, a boner comedy mixed with like extremely like edgy it's not like a horror movie but like the the plot is that it's usually based around sex like a girl's not hot enough or this guy's like dick isn't big enough yeah. and so they like summon this demon to like fix their problem and of course like it goes wrong the dude gets like a gigantic dick and like yeah it, and it's just like as, when we were in high school, yeah. this was like the funniest stuff. Yeah, they actually the first three movies are on Amazon Prime. At least last yeah. I checked, Filthy so you, McNasty. So yeah, I cannot recommend you watch them. But if you are a true, if you're a true Xenu uh, <laughs> Games head, you want to get the lore. Is that what our fans are called? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I was just saying that like Z-Nights? in the Z- yeah. If you're, if you're a true Xenite, we we'll work we'll workshop. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if you're a true head of the podcast. You gotta you gotta get the lore on uh, filthy. Yeah, they, they are free um, on there, so you don't have to buy them. Like it's last I checked, they're not funny anymore. Like as an adult, I tried watching it, being like, oh, you remember? yeah, it's if, really not funny anymore. If someone tries making you pay for it, don't. they're they're trying to <laughs> yeah. fuck you over, and you should not. There's there's Terrible. filthy McNasty, filthy McNasty, or filthy McNastyist, and there's Beyond McNasty, which is like I guess like the celebration film that they had. They come <laughs> off more rather than like funny boner comedies, they're more like a uh, channel awesome specials. Yeah. Which is maybe the worst thing yeah, I could say about them. They do come yeah. off as Channel Awesome movies. With all right. these inside jokes. Yeah. Probably more put together than Channel Awesome uh, <laughs> movies, but yeah, that, that might be my worst one. Worst movie, Brendan? Uh, I can't remember the name. It was that one zombie movie on, on Netflix. I can't remember there the was, name. There uh, was my first... Oh, remember that? It, was it just like, hit me, yeah. My first yeah. date in high school with uh, a girl. <laughs> we, we watched Shrooms on Netflix, I remember, <laughs> which was... Uh, a good time. Weren't the zombies like blue or something, Brendan? Or yeah, like, they they had like this really weird production design, and it, it was like I think you guys I have no idea because what you used to do not to keep talking about Netflix, but like I wish they would do something. Like I think that Amazon does something similar to this. You would join your party, and like you would see like your avatars in the theater, which was kind of cute, and you could like react to it, but you could like sync up so we could all watch the same movie and there'd be a host who would like pause it, rewind it. So we'd watch all these movies together. Mm-hmm. And you nowadays it's hard to do that unless you have like a special built in thing. But that was so fun. Like watching movies together like that. What time are we at Brennan? Uh, let's see. How far in are we? Uh, 48 minutes. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, that feature where you could watch it all in the theater was so dope. Like we've seen we so could many do it cool over weird party <laughs> chat. Yeah, I'm so sad they took that feature out. But you think for the pandemic, more people would come up with that? Yeah, yeah. right. Instead of bitching about Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. What's your What's your least favorite movie, Luke? Is it Bucky Larson? I want to put that as my least favorite movie, but it's really not my least favorite. Yeah, movie. Yeah. Right. Because we have so much inside jokes with it now that it's not... Yeah, I don't hate it. It's a like, terrible movie in itself. Yeah. I really have to like... What is like my least favorite movie? Oh, the Cool Ranch Doritos. Oh, they should be their own food group. No, like, I can quote that movie. Yeah. It's the sad thing. Right. Is it the worst movie at that point? If you no. like it that much? I don't think so. That's what it is. It's like regarded as one of the worst movies ever made. But we've watched it so many times. I bought you the Blu-ray. And it is like... Nick Swartzen at his Nick Swartzen. Yeah, Lucas found the only Blu-ray in America <laughs> of Bucky Larson. My only regret is I bought you the Blu-ray. It was like stupid expensive because no one like had it. It was like twenty six bucks or something. But you can get a Nick Swartzen signed Blu-ray for like thirty eight bucks or something. I was like, man, <laughs> yeah, I it, regret every day. You should have cop the extra. Like, Nick, yeah, come on the podcast, please explain <laughs> to us how. Nick Swartzen, tell us about this terrible movie you made. You said it was marketed to the wrong people is why it failed. <laughs> Please explain to me who it was supposed to be marketed to. <laughs> Dead people. I will give that movie a... You should watch it once if you can find it for free. Yeah. And you've already drank that night. Yeah. <laughs> Do not watch it sober. Yeah. Any, not- <laughs> any of these movies in the right context, like the context of, oh, I'm into shitty movies and I'm like... 
either bored by myself or I'm hanging out with friends and you want to like check out a dumb, like stupid movie, or maybe you and your partner are into watching like stupid movies together, you should do it then too. Like sexual partner. That it, it <laughs> I'm we're given the vibes of like the best of the worst series, you know. Matt, you named the series. It's gonna be we're gonna get this roll in here soon, hopefully. The S Files. I want you to I'm gonna go take a leak real quick because yeah. we're reaching uh, danger levels, but I want you to give <laughs> <laughs> it's all that champagne of beer you've been drinking. Miller I want High you Life. To give the fans a taste of what is coming up with the S Files, Ugh. what it is, just give a little brief overview while I uh while I run real quick. Let me <laughs> let me hype it up so much and then we won't have an episode for like three months. <laughs> uh yeah, no, we we're trying to do a series called the S Files where we incorporate that hobby Luke and I do where uh <laughs> there he goes. Uh where we watch uh terrible Adam Sandler movies and we want to rope Craig and Brendan and maybe some of our other friends into it. Because we have found that there are different era of Sandler movies, and there is very distinct grades of them. So there are some Adam Sandler movies that did not pass the 15-minute test for me and are perhaps the worst movies I've ever seen, like <laughs> like, Bar like Sandy Wexler and The Cobbler and... And I already I've mentioned, never heard of these movies, right. but if you told me devoid yeah. of context, I would tell you they're Adam Lu Sandler movies. Yeah, we are we are scholars when it comes to the Happy Madison productions, and there is maybe like three original OG Happy Madison movies that were like the good ones, and then everything else in between is just. I guess we love them because they're nostalgia traps. And you never know what the fuck you're going to get. Like we found one at the exchange one time that was called Here Comes the Boom. And the plot was that Kevin James became like an MMA fighter in it. And I never heard of it before. I, and we turned it on just to see how it would be. And you, you just never know what you're going to get with a movie like that. Because sometimes those movies won't be too bad. And then sometimes it's just like littered, like, cause it's early 2000s. So it'll be like, here's a trans joke. Here's a, f oh, isn't that, that guy's fat. Isn't that funny? And it's like, you're watching it and you're like, oh my fucking God. This was like peak comedy in like 2006. Yeah. You know, so it's like the Russian roulette of comedy. Yes. It, yes. You, you never really know what you're going to get with it, whether it's going to be good or bad. And, and some Adam Sandler movies are like fucking designed for you to be able to watch it with your kids. And then some of them are like filthy, like filthy McNasty. And uh, yeah, there, there's there's ones I guarantee you guys have never heard of that Luke and I find them and we seek them out. And uh, I think it would be cool to... You know, not just do a series where it's like, oh, here's Billy Madison. Well, you've all seen Billy Madison. But like these more deeper cut ones, like here comes the boom and the one where David Spade is a bad father. Do you, I, father of the year, I think yeah, is what it's called. I love that one. Like, oh my God. And stuff like Bucky Larson too, that just like flies on. I think that's Happy Madison. It just flies under the. It might be. It might not be, but. It might be included though. We'll throw it in <laughs> there because he's part of the cast of like the rotating Sandler actors that always are in all his movies. And. Did you ever have to pee so bad when you stood up? You could a little feel, bit dribbled out. <laughs> not, yes. Not that. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like you feel pain when you stand up. Yes. <laughs> there, there's. Oh, dude, I went to a um, at a work function and we left it and we had to walk. Like it was like if you're from over the south side of Pittsburgh, probably like two people watching this. But we wanted to walk from one side to the other side. It took like 30 minutes. Oh. I had to pee from like my second step and i couldn't didn't go back to the bar and by the time like all these places none of them had bathrooms i walked in and 
and then like it was like around my my birthday and we finally get into the bar that everyone's at because they moved to like the fucking ass end of south side yeah and everyone starts singing happy birthday to me and i'm like now is not the time <laughs> yeah. I and i just like i almost cried i the relief was so <laughs> intense of peeing i've never had to pee like that yeah. in my life so <laughs> i have a south side pee story as well uh luke you were there we were ubering down it was me you and a young lady and we were ubering. oh yeah we were ubering down to a like wherever the hell we ended up going one of the bars down there and i remember we had been drinking beforehand which is why we're ubering there smart decision (laughs) and i had to pee so bad we got stuck in traffic on the road on south side and i I saw like eight minute delay and i was like i remember our uber driver was pretty cool we were talking to him the whole time and i looked at him i went i'm gonna be real with you man I have to pee so bad right now. (laughs) I said, I am hopping out of your car to go pee in that alleyway over there because if I wait another second, I'm going to pee in your car and I do not want to do that. (laughs) And he was like, he was like kind of shocked and you and the girl in the back were like, Matt, what are you doing? Why are you getting out of the car? And I like unlocked the car, hopped out and I I told the guy as I was leaving, I said, uh, I was like, just drive a mile down hit the destination i said i will leave you a tip on the app you did a really good job i said but i have to leave your car right now or i'm gonna pee (laughs) and i bolted into an alley and peed behind a trash can and it was i needed like just desperation i've never (laughs) i've never like been so you know i would never do that it, but I had to and I was like I've never had that happen before but I was like I had to go so bad that <laughs> I know what you mean Craig like it was like I had to go so bad was that hurting. I was sitting there and I felt like pee was coming out I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna piss in this guy's car like I need <laughs> it, to it's like it's all you can think about I was with yeah. like, I my, need to call an audible yeah. right now and get out of this car and like even if I wet my pants in the street it'll be better yeah I, I was, <laughs> like, I was with my girlfriend at the time and that entire like 20-30 minute walk I didn't say a word to her because mentally yeah. I'm just like I gotta pee I gotta yeah. pee you can't think about anything that's like, that mindset have you ever guys like ever been in that mindset where you're so like uncomfortable in a situation or something is going wrong like so bad just that like get through it nothing matters yeah like did, like everything feels weird and nothing matters until you can like get out of that situation drinking shock top yeah. tonight shock top give us a sponsorship also dr squatch <laughs> we need our sponsor i'm gonna hit up dr squatch so we can try to get up a what about express vpn they help everyone out too how about uh pure, pure aqua <laughs> water taste the difference pure aqua See, those, hey can you pass me the other shock top that's in there those Maybe stories are really scott Yes, the Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott, give us a sponsor. Those stories are fine because those can be rectified in an alley. But there was one time... I will just remark that uh, James Cameron invented the pulse rifle, not Ridley Scott. We used, to, <laughs> we used to live in North Carolina temporarily for school and for the military. And we were in downtown Raleigh. And we were had some friends down there. It was me and Matt. And we were going to a couple different bars. We are having a good time. Night out with friends. We Ubered down. We are going to Uber back, being responsible. And we went from... They had this boxcar arcade that was really cool. And we are yeah. like, oh, you guys want to go check out another one? Box it's like, co- boxcar in Raleigh. Check it out. Sponsor us? <laughs> no, I was just... Telling, yeah, sponsor us. No. Check Everyone's, it out if you're, if you're down there. Everyone's like, oh, you want to hit up this bar? It's like 15 minutes away. We could just walk there. Cool. We walk there. Mess they, with this poor on camera. <laughs> we get like a drink there. It's all right. <laughs> we're like, we want to go back to the arcade and play some games back at the box car. And then we're like, cool. The second we stepped out of that place, yeah. I had to take a dump. Yeah. But I was like, I think it's because we got uh, street. Food. We did. We, we got, got street. If you food. remember, we yeah. got street meat right outside a box car from mm-hmm. a vendor, and he was selling like, you know, lamb rolls or whatever. It and was. I remember it was chicken. Yeah. But it was on a hot dog bun. Yeah, and none, <laughs> none of us, no one else in our group got sick except you. You instantly had to poop after eating it. So you must have gotten like the bad chunk of chicken or something. <laughs> Whatever it was, as soon as we started walking, we're like, we're going back to boxcar, which is like a 15 minute walk. Like step number two, I had to like, I had to go bad. Like I'm talking like, whew, like wiping the brow, yeah. sweat, like, you know, I'm walking like, 
I'm walking here. I'm walking like 10 feet in front of yeah. everyone else. Like, and you no one's Google... making fun of me. No one's saying anything because they know how serious I am. You can Google map it. We walked all the way to the London Bridge pub and the line for the bathroom there was out the door. That's what it was. Into... Yeah. So it, you can Google map Boxcar Raleigh to the London Bridge pub in Raleigh. If it's still like, if they're both still open. And we walked all the way there and then when you couldn't get in the bathroom in there, I swear we hung out in there for like maybe five minutes and you had to go so bad. We walked all the way back <laughs> to boxcar. Yeah. Uh, we walked all the way back to boxcar. Also, we were in college at the time, so we were trying to get shots and the cheapest shots were at bo boxcar had a deal where it was I like not care. <laughs> lime tequila for like two bucks. So the rest of us were trying to go. Lucas was like 20 minutes in front of us just booking it down the <laughs> sidewalk just like this you i've never seen you closer to killing another human being than when we got to the front and the bouncer asked for your id <laughs> you were like you were like <laughs> you like threw it at him and just like oh, it as was soon as you could you got in there and we didn't see you maybe for like the rest of the night i well, swear like an hour later you came out and we were just drinking having a good time playing uh uh, we were playing track and field, the the old arcade game, and that one lady came up and filled in your spot. Some random lady was playing <laughs> with us. She was kind of a ringer, and uh, you uh, you finally came out. It was it was like you were a new man. I was fighting my street food demons. That yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely rough experience. Yeah, I think we also stopped at Whiskey Kitchen along the way, but then we sat down at Whiskey Kitchen. It was like. Uh, you can have a drink of Basil Hayden's for twenty three dollars, and we looked at each other and we're like, "Well, let's not drink here." <laughs> that was back whenever uh, I used to get made fun of. I don't know what it was. Sitting in the back seat of any car, drinking or not, I used to get car sick, so I would always get like the front seat, and everybody, oh, he has to get the front seat so he doesn't yeah. get sick. Is Uber like is Uber dying? Because yes, of like the pandemic, because of COVID, yeah. yeah. Like anytime we've tried to take one recently, it's been like double price. Yeah, it's and hell. Like There's the no drivers. one else. Yeah, yeah. I, I once took a five minute ride from uh, like North Shore to where I live, uh, and it's like it's like between five ten minutes, and the shit was like forty five fifty dollars. Yes, isn't that yeah. insane? Yeah, yeah. I haven't even yeah. like the price is doubled to get like from here to downtown now. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of places though, or everywhere has like help wanted out front anymore, and uh, yeah, it's a shame because it's, it's like a great service. That's like, what are we supposed to take? How do you even take a taxi? Have you ever like? Have you ever yeah, taken right, a taxi never. just to take a taxi? Yeah, never in my life. When yeah. I lived in Florida, I had to take a taxi once. I remember just going from like the like the place I lived to the beach. It was like a twenty minute drive. It was like an eighty dollar taxi ride. <laughs> it's, it's like. It's like $160. So you had to get a group of people there to like fill yeah. up a taxi to split this hundred and you know, whatever dollars just to go to the beach for a day. It was like an investment. Yeah. But uh so hopefully they make it through. Hopefully they start getting some new drivers soon. Uber <laughs> sponsors. We'll get you. Yeah. yeah, right. No. Here's here's my referral code that supports only me. Yeah, right. <laughs> No, I, I'm only accepting sponsorships from Dr. Squatch Soap at this time. <laughs> yeah. We talk about their soap so much. None of us have ever used it. None of us have ever used it. Dr. Squatch, this is your chance. We should we should do like a uh, 100 subscriber special or something where when we reach 100 subscribers, we can uh, do like an unboxing and a testing of Dr. Squatch <laughs> Soap. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, we need some. <laughs> hey, 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 which yeah. one does my dog like the best? Yeah. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> well, they feed him the grapefruit IPA. They follow. Oh. They follow what I think is hilarious, and it's the old sex sells thing because yeah. they do like the girl in the bikini. If my man smelled like this, I'd sleep with him. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and it's like this thing of like uh, one thing that's always stuck with me is like. Fellas, are you still using that same soap your mom gave you back Mommy's in like Mommy's boy? Yeah, back in high school. Don't lather your man meat in like chemicals. <laughs> you know, oh, oh your your mom. You're gave not you? a dish. You're, right. you're a man. <laughs> you're a man. Yeah, your you're mom. Right. Your mom gave you that soap. Here's some grapefruit IPA, Doctor Squatch. You little bitch. <laughs> there was like a really long. Seriously period. though, give us a sponsor. Hey, Doctor Squatch, hit us I'm up. gonna hit them. I'm gonna hit them up this week. Yeah, tag, tag Doctor Squatch. We're gonna tag you, Mister Squatch. Oh, sorry, I meant Doctor Squatch. <laughs> Doctor Squatch. <laughs> Doctor. 
like there was like a really long it's still kind of going on but you can get like anything delivered to your door anymore and there was yeah. like subscription services for like everything you remember like any like stupid ones oh loot crate <laughs> yeah, yeah I, mean, I was signed up for loot crate do you, you guys might remember this because i would talk about it on xbox and i was 18 just gotten out of the house i would watch the screen junkies podcast every week and they were sponsored by loot crate and i was like unironically i was like i need to get signed up for this <laughs> and i signed up for it i got it for three months and canceled it because i remember <laughs> it just was like it was just crap like it yeah. was like here is one thing you might like in the box and then a bunch of just shit to clog up your bookshelf. Yeah, there's that Red Letter Media joke where they're like, they're a bunch of cheap dollar store toys with your favorite logos yeah. on them, <laughs> which is exactly what it is. Yeah. I remember one was like, it was like, oh, here's a Hot Wheel of the car from Supernatural. <laughs> and Very then, cool. And then here's, uh, here's Ear Soap from The Walking Dead. It's like... It looks like a bunch of ears on a, on a rope, but it's soap. And I'm like... I bet it didn't smell as good as Dr. Squatch. It did. It, <laughs> I've never smelled Dr. Squatch, and I can guarantee you it did not, because I took one whiff of it, and it smelled like the props from Spirit Halloween. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not putting that on my body, and I threw it away. Uh, <laughs> most of the Loot Crate stuff I got from Loot Crate ended up in the fucking garbage. And... <laughs> Like, it just did. It ended up in the trash. The stuff you didn't give to me. <laughs> yeah, right? The stuff I didn't just leave at your house. That <laughs> Pikachu hat. I don't whatever. even know where it is it's at yeah. this point. You give it to so many people. It was, a, it was a Pikachu hat, and it had strings and balls that came down, and the balls were Pokeballs. And it's something that would look really cute on a hot girl. And But on me, I was like, I need to get rid of this. Like, <laughs> this, this thing looks stupid. And... Uh, I great hit us out. I just started. <laughs> leaving. Yeah, I, I remember I left it at like Craig's place, and then Craig left it at someone else's house, and then it just has been passed. I think around. Mike has it at this point. Yeah, Mike. Mike might have it down in uh, your, to your wedding. It might be at like his mom's house or something. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got a question for you guys. What would be in the Xenu Games loot crate? <laughs> the Xenu Games loot crate, maybe like an empty beer can from Lucas. I'm going to break the rule for a second here. The Deadliest Warrior Season 1 Rare DVD yes. would be included. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say a used condom, but an unused condom. <laughs> yeah. open. Unused condom. <laughs> like that. A copy of Herodotus. <laughs> a copy of Harold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A copy of Harold. Yeah. <laughs> Bucky Larson. <laughs> Harold. Oh, uh, and Deadliest Warrior Season 1 on DVD. Yeah, that's what... Yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah that, that's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys want to wrap this up yeah we're probably over what's our time at uh we're over an hour all right it's time to wrap it up boys <laughs> thanks oh, for watching i'm doing the two finger point exclusively now no more one finger points what's that from only the girl next door ah, only yeah, that's right. two finger pointing where, the girl where next i go door. where i go you get over here <laughs> <laughs> all right what's what's that production company here happy I'm madison gonna, uh, i'm gonna oh, go open it and, up uh, open it up and it's like right on the inside there. i'm gonna i'm gonna reach out to them to city lights home entertainment i'm gonna see who owns their rights an answering machine <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna see who owns the, all of their movies bing bing, bing. i'm sorry their their, their, <laughs> their their tax lawyer answers <laughs> if we can license we're not paying you anything <laughs> if we can license the right to watch their movies, we can do a live watch party where we show the movies and like us watching the movies with them. That would be a blast. So City Lights <laughs> License Entertainment. Herald, uh, you have a low price of $1,000. Hell yeah. I'd pay it. <laughs> <laughs> no one. <laughs> <laughs> no one. This paid the $13 million that we lost making this movie. Exactly. Uh, three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. This has been the Pretty Good Podcast. And um, look forward to what did we just filmed today. That was William Wallace and versus uh, Shaka, Zulu. Shaka Zulu. We got that coming out. Currently We're editing Maori versus Shaolin. Hopefully yeah. that's out before this, but you never know. Oh, that should definitely shit happens. <laughs> the last episode of this is going to be out real soon. But we got some more stuff coming up. Uh, we got possibly the S files coming out in the works. We got probably yep. some gameplay videos coming out again soon once we all get together again. Okay. And uh, stay tuned. Z New Games. Check out Green Dice Games, my personal channel. At Z New Games on Twitter. Or send us a 
Send us an email if you want. Xenogames1 at gmail.com. Hit Ooh. us up. And if you want to come to Matt's wedding, it's actually going to be at the LA Convention Center. <laughs> so show up. Uh, what date is it? Right. Yeah. Uh, next week. Next week. Show <laughs> up at the LA Convention Center. Um, let them know you're Dallas Warrior podcast yeah, fan. Please, yeah. Be, be there or be square. Yeah. <laughs> that is the LA Convention Center again. In Los Angeles, California. Yeah. <laughs> what a good bit. <laughs> Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time.